Good evening from Orlando, the focal point of a nation still reeling from the carnage that took place just up the street at the Pulse nightclub. Tonight, new cell phone video of the moment the dance floor turned into a killing field. Shocking stories of survival, harrowing escapes, and heroic acts in the face of relentless hate. And we were there as one survivor was reunited with her angel, the man who blocked a bullet for her. At that moment in that room, it wasn't a, a, a typical shooting. It was hate. It was going boom, 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 boom nonstop. Were people it, screaming? Were they? They were. Yeah. Every, it was chaos. It felt like a, a war zone. Yeah. There's bullets yeah. flying all over the place, and people just want to protect themselves and run. And you're hearing the moans of people. What are you thinking about where Jeanette well, is and how to get to her? I was scared. I was scared. I don't know what I think, but. Fear and heartache weigh heavy in the Orlando night. Outside the hospital, Jeanette McCoy waits for an update on her friend, Angel. It was hard knowing that I'm alive because my buddy was right behind me and he gets shot in his back. I'm not dead because of him, because that bullet was supposed to be on my back. That was Angel. That was Angel. What He's my angel. <laughs> These are the harrowing stories of survival and courage after the deadliest mass shooting in American history. All I could think about is how, how near death was. I saw bodies going down and the guy next to me was shot. People were running. Uh, I got stepped on a couple times, and, but I was like, I don't care if I'm getting stepped on, I'm still alive. 49 victims dead, 53 injured at a gay nightclub in Orlando. Tonight, a nation in mourning over lives lost. When you saw your friend's name on your phone, what went through your mind? I just thought that could have been me. That should have been me, but I'm here oh. today for a reason. Tonight, we're learning more about the innocent victims in Sunday's horrific attack. This photo of Jeff Rodriguez taken just 30 minutes before the attack began to unfold. When the terror began, he texted his brother Santos, who recounted their exchange with David Muir. And he states here, says, I've been shot at a club. I'm dying. I love you. Dead bodies on top of me. Tell everyone I love them. In fact, Rodriguez was shot three times when the gunman stormed into a bathroom where he and so many were hiding. One of his last text messages was this image from inside the bathroom. Tonight, we've blurred the faces of the other victims. Some of them were actually hiding underneath the dead bodies. But miraculously, his brother survived. Tonight, this new image of Jeff, now lying in a hospital bed, alive, thanks to a friend who held pressure to his wounds to stop the bleeding. Have you talked to your brother? He's, he knows that you're there, he can hear you, but he can't say anything to you. And tonight, more details about what happened inside the Pulse nightclub. 29-year-old Omar Mateen, a self-proclaimed ISIS supporter, armed with a 223 caliber AR-type rifle and a Glock 17 9mm handgun, is about to unleash terror. It's just after 2 a.m., Latin night, 320 packed into the crowded nightclub. Near an entrance, Mateen starts to fire. An off-duty police officer responds. Then a shootout, and Mateen moves deeper inside the club to the main dance floor. 25-year-old Amanda Alviar is inside. Her brother shows us this Snapchat video she recorded. Over the music, gunshots. I don't know if my sister suffered. I mean, I know she was scared. Alviar would become one of the gunman's victims. Ray Rivera was inside, one of the three DJs on duty that night. It started with just hearing pops. That's when I turned the music completely off, and that's when everybody started running. Some patrons running to the bathrooms, where as many as 20 people huddled together, fearing for their lives. Mateen enters, taking another four or five hostages. One survivor even playing dead, as he recalled to my colleague Gio Benitez. And I was uncomfortably wedged between my shoulders up against the back wall, my face, my forehead up against the toilet bowl. At 2.30 a.m., Mateen calls 911, hanging up twice before a dispatcher calls him back. He then pledges his allegiance to ISIS. And he was telling them, stop bombing ISIS. Stop bombing ISIS on the, uh, in Syria. The bomb squad and hazmat teams arrive on the scene around 3 a.m. as hostage negotiators try and talk the gunman down. We're being told possibly up to uh, 15 remaining in the club that are barricaded in. 
Just after 5 a.m., police detonate two controlled explosions to distract Mateen. They then use heavy machinery like this to plow into the wall, puncturing holes that became escape hatches for those hiding inside. And then a barrage of bullets in the night. Look at that, just shooting back and forth. And we have shots fired on scene. Hope he's requested you stay back, don't enter the scene. Multiple gunshot wounds, chest and leg. The gunfire ending with Mateen shot dead. One officer shot in the head, saved only by his helmet. 30 hostages freed. At the end of that terrifying three-hour standoff, the enormity of the heartbreak just beginning to set in. We now have our large MCI unit, 250 patients. They can't identify anybody. Christine Leinenen says her son Christopher was at the club. I called him last night at 6 o'clock, and I left him with, I love you, Chris. Those would be the last words she would share with her son. He became one of the too many victims in Sunday's tragic massacre. The innocent faces now known to be among the deceased. 23-year-old Stanley Almodovar, 20-year-old Luis Omar Ocasio Capo, and 37-year-old Kimberly Morris, killed on duty, working Saturday night as a security guard at Pulse. But amidst all the horror, there are stories of heroism. I noticed someone like kind of stumbling, covered in blood. Um, I kind of like crept up to him, grabbed him, pulled him over to me, and um, he clearly was shot. Josh McGill took the shirt off his back to tie a tourniquet, helping stop the bleeding for Rodney, a complete stranger. And I was like, you know, you're going to be okay. I said a quick prayer. I just was like asking God, please let him be okay. Josh telling us today that man is now stable in the hospital. Everything is still fresh. It's going to take more than a day or two or even a week. And just hours ago, we caught up with Jeanette as she headed to the hospital to visit Angel, the man who took a bullet instead of her. There's so much that I want to say, you know, and, and I also want to apologize. Oh no, you know. Why do you want to apologize? You have nothing to apologize for that. He knows that. I know, but sometimes, I don't know, what if I would have just let him walk off? And I, because I, I grabbed him and I was dancing with him and what if, I don't know, there's always the what if. That I've just been thinking a lot of that. Emotions running high, we drive her to the hospital to be reunited with Angel. Here we go. The pair walk in. At this point, they've been inside the hospital for two hours. I cannot imagine how emotional this reunion must be. A short time later, they come out. I'm happy now. Relieved he's going to be OK. But his suffering was far greater than she'd realized. He had three gunshot wounds to his leg. Oh my god. He had a broken left leg. And what happened was he was shot. He was shot initially. He fell to the ground and he was trampled. And then he also got shot in the back. The gunman shot him. The gunman went to the other rooms and shot. Oh. Now there's a bunch of bodies all over the floor oh around him. And the gunman came back and he was shooting everybody on the floor. <gasps> and he shot him in his back. And everyone that was on the ground, he was coming and he was shooting again to make sure that they were dead. He had to pretend that he was He had to pretend that he was dead. Yeah. And he stood there and he prayed, oh, you know, and he said he doesn't know how he wasn't shot in the head. I'm like so excited. I was like, I have to take a photo. He's in high school. He spirits. looks amazing. Isn't he? Yes. That smile, a glimmer of hope, so desperately needed after that night of sheer terror and hate. The moment he saw me, he had that, that smile and uh, I, I hugged him and. Uh, how did that hug feel? It felt amazing. It felt amazing. Of course, it made me cry. And, um, you know, I just told him how much I love him. And I told him he stuck with me. That's it.